two, Bird is Pro in existence. Me and Des Moret are casting. Uh, or actually, I'm going to solo this, so. You're going to solo it? Go for it, dog. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we got a, a double stack over towards B, over here. There's actually baiting snacks, um, in that corner, flipping. Gonna be pushing through the squeaky. Doesn't know where anyone is. Kyrie gonna be boosted up on the boost box. He's gonna sit here with the bomb, typically a place where you don't want it, because if the bomb gets dropped mid, it's probably lost forever. He's gonna walk right by Sam. Sandbags and Pasha's gonna take his head off cleanly. Sucker Ron goes down as well, and that's why now the bomb is in such a bad spot. Musan Bonnie trying to win this trade against Pasha. He's gonna get flanked by Neo, and that's the difficulty of dealing with a team like this. They aren't gonna show you respect when they know uh, that they are uh, of a much higher tier. Now, pushing the flanks immediately uh, once they had the idea that it wasn't going to be B and capitalizing on the information, getting uh, every player in the back pretty much. What a smooth transition we had there, Launders, right? We're the best in the business, man. We're the best. It's VP getting off to that 1-0 start. As you said, you know, coming off a really big win in map one there. I think that was, what, 16-6 to is how they closed out that game? Um, having just a really dominant T side and being able to finish it off quite quickly there on the CT side of Overpass. But uh, we are on to Cast, which is uh, VP Stomping Grounds. I mean, this is their best map. They're considered probably one of the best teams on Cast, period, in CSGO. Um, Mm -hmm. And this is definitely it's going to be an uphill battle for existence, though this is their map pick, I guess just due to their own comfort level. Uh, trying to get rid of maps that they were very uncomfortable with, like Cobble, like Train. Because they know that Virtus Pro is not afraid to play those two maps, too, is the thing. Like, some teams in their veto process would feel comfortable just leaving Train on the board because they don't think teams would pick it. But we know VP will. They, in fact, picked it against Publicker uh, mm -hmm. and won it. So it's as if, you know, existence just had to make sure those maps were not going to get played because they probably haven't played them at all. There's a VP just kind of clearing this second round out quite easily, you know, and only losing... Well, I guess they did lose that second player there right at the end, but uh, still pretty comfortable victory there for VP in the second round. Yeah. Uh, the picks came out early, but they invested a little bit of money in that round. I'd say if you do invest that money into that second round buy, which is just so common, you still want to get at least three kills, at least get a bomb down to make it uh, worthwhile. Right. Um, otherwise, they're going to buy one more time. If they don't get a bomb plant here and, and they only have Glocks, they won't be able to get um, all the nades they want. All right. also just to let you folks know that pretty much right after this map, we will have another best of two between Virtus Pro and Gamers 2 battle of the poles uh, here in the next game. So just so you know, there is more action to be had here over at MLG and Sivo as uh, VP looking to close out this third round quite easily as well as Neo just goes on a huge flank through mid garage and picks up the hat trick and uh, you know, like I said, puts a very early stoppage uh, to that round, and so we do now have the opening gun round for existence coming out here on their T side, and we'll see what what uh, what do they got? Why do they pick this map? What uh, what do they feel that they can do? This will be kind of our, our first look at that. Uh... Yeah, for sure, this is going to be a real test for them, and they, you know they got a plan for not being able to win a pistol and still come up with a good half. So uh, here we are, first gun round. It's going to be five people towards A if they don't do anything at A. Um, it'll be a huge mistake considering how how likely VP will be to push the extremity of the map once they have the just the inkling that it might not be there. Now Musambani gonna go through the smoke actually late through a flash. That was a really cool pop flash. That was yeah. a really cool pop flash from Kyrie. Actually, maybe we'll talk about that pop flash in a second here. As VP though still holding quite well, Taz from the balcony delivering the pain of two kills. Also his teammate, uh, you know Biali and Pasha uh, chiming in quite well. Now Kyrie's all alone, one versus three and. I mean, that was actually a pretty neat pop flash I haven't really seen before. He threw it Wait. on the wall next to lockers, and it came out right on right on the edge of the smoke. That's actually really cool. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, B.I. was able to recover quite easily just by staying inside the site, and then Taz, you know, unaffected on the balcony, comes out and grabs two kills. So, yeah, and it actually, unfortunately, didn't do anything. They didn't wait for the flash to pop before they ran out. They kind of ran out, um, and it, it kind of popped behind them as they they went out backwards. So that allowed them to get as far into the site as possible. But ultimately, it just, just started getting mowed down. I thought they would have a much better chance on that A-take. To it looked pretty disciplined and, and well-timed. It's just, yeah. unfortunately, I mean, you're playing up against Biali, who was kind of the anchor a bomb site player for Virtus Pro, and he's just so smart and so... Such a good fragger. In fact, when he's on, his aim is probably some of the best out there. Yeah, um, he set some insane shots. But they, uh, they didn't have a like. Has got has got the catwalk, right? I don't think they had a smoke down. 
Nah, yeah, like I said, he was on the balcony. He was kind of unaffected by anything. And they were so focused on trying to get Bialy, who was just being so good at evading mm -hmm. uh, the attack, you know, getting his kill, ducking back into the site, just being really crafty and smart, you know, bidding time for his team to rotate and get in position. And so they just didn't even pay any attention to Taz. I think Taz's two kills were, like, in the side of the head, the players who were still trying to work inside the site. Uh, so that was kind of a big deal there. It's, looks like this is looking for some type of mid control here. A pop flash from Kyrie from T spawn, but unfortunately that Molly uh, from the CT side is uh, going to kind of block them from getting that boost and, and the smoke on mid garage as well. As we have Bialy getting so aggressive here in a main this round, he could possibly catch someone off guard. And he yeah, will. Yeah, get stuck at Ron. Yeah, oh. stuck at Ron turned away right at the wrong moment to kind of make sure no one was pushing uh, checkers. And he got caught still by the push A main, so that's a little bit unfortunate. That underscore timing, though. Um, uh, everyone staged up. Oh, getting. Oh, oh my goodness. This, this relentless aggression from VP on the CT side has just been absolutely flooring existence. I mean, you have Bialy pushing A main, getting a kill, being able to fall back. And then they have snacks with the counter boost, uh, grabbing just two quick kills there and getting the bomb down. And I mean, VP have been doing this almost every round, just getting so aggressive inside mid. And that's why they're one of the best cash teams. I mean, on both sides of the map, VP are, are so good at implementing mid control, which is one of the biggest tools on this map to be successful, uh, is being able to have that mid control. It gives you so many options, or it shuts down so many options and gives you so much information from the CT side. Yeah. That makes those rotates really fast. You can pick A or B without letting the other team know exactly what you're doing. Um, highway to A is a little bit harder to take, but also a full A is viable because you can go squeaky and instead. But uh, right, uh, this is actually something that, Atu was talking about. The coach now for Dip, uh, back mm -hmm. when he was still playing with 3D Max, he was talking about, or maybe when he was commentating at uh, PGL, he's talking about how you know back in the day everyone just kind of referred to cash as an, an NA map, right? Because it, it came from our scene. It's a map that we played in Source a lot. Uh, a lot of the NA teams were pretty good on it. In fact, getting wins against big European teams on cash, like when C9 would beat teams like VP and such uh, back in the day, uh, different ESCA land events, and, and even, I think it was either ESWC or, or the last face at LAN when uh, C9, C9 had some wins against VP on cash. But regardless, he said that basically the meta began to shift in Europe, and, and some of these big teams now who are very good on cash, like Envious, like VP, uh, have just understood, you know, how to work mid better, and that's been kind of a big turning point for these the, these European teams. To really, I mean, implement like cash has almost become the new inferno as far as popularity and how many teams are good on it and and how often it's played. Yeah, I mean, it's I think it's probably my favorite map. They uh, and and the reason for that is that like I, I don't I don't really like maps that are uh, really long rotate. Oh, oh flip it! Oh, flipping it too. Playing duck hunt right there, just caught a guy jumping across the screen, but it's still it's been VP on absolute shutdown mode across the map. You know, getting some really quick early picks and, and, and now forcing Kyrie into a really, really tough one versus three, and he'll get caught quite easily there by Bialy, and VP is just up zero right now. So this is just uh this is just kind of disheartening if you're an existence fan or a player who's trying to at least get something out of this after losing that first map, you know, trying to at least get a point here for a tie. And it's not looking very good. Mm -hmm. It's it's going to be tough. Now they're they're on a, a double buy, which means they're going to have three smokes in total. They'll probably want a five man something because they won't have any opportunity to sell fakes. Um, and working right. picks obviously doesn't seem to work. So uh, you know, going for mid control requires with a lot of needs in itself. And so full A might be the perfect answer here, as a split B would be much better than going full in. And they're just going to flash in once again and try to kill this player fence. He does get him for free. That is a good opening, but Taz quickly to trade. Grabs the frag. Yeah, he's just team. playing these smokes so well as Taz. He tries to run through another, but he does get caught by Musumbani. So existence actually in the best situation I've seen them in this entire half to finally close out a round. They have a three v three post plant situation here, as uh, you know VP have all the money in the world. They're definitely going for this right now. As Snacks and company trying to rush through the smoke inside the site. Snacks is going to catch one at the big box. Mason trades, but he has no idea. Pasha has slipped through the quad. Pasha playing so smart for the information. Doesn't rush the kill. Allows Neo to get in position to get his frag as well. And VP make their retake. They're now up eight to zero. And man, oh man, like I said, that was finally a round where I felt existence had some good footing, you know, in the round. Maybe even an advantage, and they just still couldn't close. Yeah, that was very close. Just a couple good pushes, snacks, good awareness, making sure that he could check the single box by jumping over. And uh, that player was blind too somehow, so I think that was uh, Pasha's flash through the smoke, but uh, ended up being a solid retake. 
um, overall, but those are the rounds yeah, that you need absolutely. to win. Actually, existence being able to get the bomb down means they're going to even have a better buy than they did last round somehow. Yeah, I mean, they're at maximum loss bonus, but then they got that extra $800, you know, for the bomb plant, so that was definitely really, really big. Uh, I mean, that's that's what, instead of... 35, it's 40... Yeah, yeah, 43, yeah. I'm, I suck at math, it's okay. <laughs> We've all established this. We've all established this. Wait, is that right? I thought it was 3,400 plus 5,800, so that'd be 4,200, 3, not 43. Oh, right? yeah, it was a 35, it's 34. Ah! Yeah. Boom, I'm back. I'm back, boys. Anyway, it's, it's all good. It's not a math contest. It's a Counter-Strike game. Anyway, Existence here. China once again muscled their way into the A-bomb site. They've had some success at least getting a bomb plant here in the last round, but they were unable to close out with the VP retake just being too strong and, uh, you know, flipping able to get in here, but Snacks is inside the site. They may not expect it, and he's able to get the kill down the flipping, and Neo picked up an out frag on the Moose and Bunny. So it is now 9-0 for Virtus Pro, and... Mm -hmm. um, Looking, looking real good here for VP. But like I said, I mean, they were the favorites. And in all honesty, with teams like TSM and NIP and stuff like that in this pro league trying to qualify uh, for, for the event in July, you kind of, as, as a, a favorite or as one of the top-ranked teams in, in the world, you, you have to be able to get these these two O's and these two points against maybe some of the, the lesser-ranked teams in the league just to yeah. make sure when you go up against teams like NIP and such that you're on equal footing standings-wise, and maybe it doesn't hurt as bad when you take a loss there if you can get all your points here. Yeah, I mean, for your own confidence, it's just going to be wins or losses, depending on how, how seriously you took each round, um, how many risks you took, you know, just to see what you could get away with, what you could learn. Um, that you could do, so that you could maybe use them on a, a team like Nip, but uh, well, it, it's one of those things where in sixteen fives versus a tier two team, then it's going to affect your confidence. It's also going to affect people's confidence in you, but um, ultimately, it's hard to say. You know, we've seen, you know, like for example, in the second round or the second half of that, that last round of the second, the well, last round of the first half on the first map, uh, where you know Neo bought a Mac ten when they could have definitely afforded to drop him an AK. Or any gun that he wanted, and Pasha bought an auto sniper. You know, they 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 are just looking for the W, and they play so many matches constantly that I think uh, most certainly they are taking anything seriously except for actually winning the match. Yeah, it's Neo just opening up two optics over there on some aggression over at B, but Mason, nice job there catching that mid aggression from Pasha and Snacks, and finally. Maybe maybe causing a VP to, to have to pay them a little bit of respect here soon. I mean, like you said, they, they've just been so aggressive, just so relentless, and maybe being a little bit, uh, I wouldn't say disrespectful, but you know, showing no respect to their opponent, knowing that they can do whatever they want, that they can yeah. and what we know, mean by, enforce know, their will at any point. No respect, yeah. basically just saying you're just going to keep pressing your opponent. You know, you're not yeah, going to give them just playing hyper-confidently. Yeah, hyper-confidence yeah. is probably a good way to put it. Yeah. I guess like showing no respect like has a negative connotation to it, which makes sense if you just heard that statement without understanding kind of how it gets referred to by like commentators. But Bialy playing that balcony position, they're not even gonna check at the up close spot, and so he'll get two free frags right there, and it does force flipping into a one v three. Is he actually? Quite a lurk. Yeah, he got a huge lurk. They have no idea. I don't think that he's like. In spawn, he will get the first kill there on the task. Touch the forklift, gets the kill in the Bialy as well, so he could actually win this. One versus one. He's still got a little bit of time left. He's going up against Neo, who has the op inside a main. That smoke is up, but not really going to do much here. Flippin' trying to angle away the round. He will find it. So great clutch there from Flippin'. One on three. Nice lurk, as you said, kind of just coming up highway, or maybe with spawn, just un unspotted. I mean, he cleans it up. What a play there from Flippin'. Yeah, it was insane. Right up highway. And uh, hit his shots. Well played. But what I was going to say earlier was is that, like, uh, you, getting uh, if you're VP and you lose this this BO2 and you get zero points or you tie it and get one point, that could be a huge difference later on in standings where like other teams that are favored might be getting these these wins easily. So right. you, you can't allow these these so-called easy wins to slip by. Uh, as VP's right back on attack mode. Yeah, they lost that last round, but they're still, you know, quite aggressive at mid, you know, pushing that op up B, and they're still getting a lot of these opening picks. Yeah, Existence could be toying with them a little bit if they, you know, pretended to five men something like they've been known to do in these previous rounds, and then just had one anchor you know, at the other side of the map just waiting for a push to happen, because because it would happen, you know, and if it didn't happen, it would be an over-rotate, and they could push through the site or something in flank, but uh, not attempting to fake or... 
<laughs> Snacks but, tried to jump on top of the thing at mid. I don't even know if you can get up there, but either way, he drops down and gets a frag, and now it's a three versus two. Flippin' trying to see if he can continue his heroics from last round and even up the kill at highway, but Kyrie will chase with the Glock, and he'll find it instead, so Bialy, you know, having to hold this highway push, but he's doing so quite effectively thus far. Getting the kill on the Kyrie, and now it's just gonna be flipping in a 1v2. He had a 1v3 last round. Can he continue the magic? He's still got time. He's even got the bomb, and he might be able to make it into B and get the bomb planted without any contest, because Neo did not go through vents. He's actually still contesting spawn, and he'll just meet up with his teammate here and just try to go for the 2v1 retake. Mm -hmm. We'll have to reload here, which is pretty unfortunate for him. They'll know exactly where he is. He's going to throw a smoke down on the site, throw a flash up as well, and actually, oh, almost finds a frag on Bialy. He finds a headshot first, so they're close. Indeed, indeed here. 11 to 1 in favor of VP. And uh, this is quite a balanced map, I have to say. Probably the most balanced map in the rotation. So you definitely, if you're existence, don't want to be seeing VP have this many rounds on CT side. You know, basically mm -hmm. they won, what, like 9 in a row? Or 10 yeah. in a row? So It goes both ways, though. If a map is really balanced, then you could say you have just as much opportunity to win every round. Right. In your half. So if you were just, you know, for example, a better T-sided team, then you might expect a, a negative half. But I feel like no matter what map you're on, oh. if you, you don't get a certain amount of CT rounds, you're what just What are they doing? Unhappy. What I is Pashat's no next doing? I think they, they're too they're deep to in the boost? smoke. They don't re yeah, they're trying to boost on top of the thing in Midgarage, but they don't realize on. that they're not far back enough to actually make that that hop. They re-smoked it. Oh, he's trying to jump on the box? Maybe? I, I thought I he was trying see. to jump on the no little garage door thingy. You know what I mean? Like the little overhang thing, the ledge. Oh my goodness. The snack still pops out and gets the frag here, and the bomb's down inside mid, and that's an easy round for VP. Yeah, I think they were trying to jump on that... That box little... inside the main, yeah. No, I, I thought they were trying to jump on that little ledge, like, above the garage door. Oh, kind of okay. Like you see on, like, because you can easily you can just, jump on this other one. You can just get there one. really easily by yourself by going from the box outside the vent. Just jump on the first thing and then jump on the second. It's really easy. Yeah, I don't know. That's what it seemed like they were trying to do. It wouldn't really make sense for them to jump on that box, but maybe they were trying to do that. I don't know. Maybe they're <laughs> going to go for it again this round. I mean, hopefully, I wouldn't be surprised. First time we've seen, I think, uh, five men over to B. Actually, one at mid just holding a... Ooh, Neo just missed that through the smoke. Up, yeah. Oh, everyone yeah, gets flashed, including Neo. Oh, Posh and they do find that free site. Yeah. Actually, no, Snacks is already rotated. Number four man in the site. Very good solo site player. He's gonna throw a smoke down. Throw a flash down. Similar to the play Flippin made last round. Actually, that flash blinds the team. Blinds oh, one player Pasha. on the team. Pasha just pushing through smokes left and right this round. He did it at mid. He got a pick at mid garage, and now he just did it over here at the B bomb site. And so existence in just such a tough spot. This bomb down basically on the ramp as Pasha will just jump on top the site boxes and grab a kill on the Musambani. And I mean, they're basically just kind of outclassing their opponents at this point. They're, they're not even really doing anything particularly um, tactical or, or special. They're just kind of just straight up out aiming their opponent. Um, yeah, it was a little bit of an interesting play from from Snacks, but the, it, I think if Neo, I mean, Neo full blinded them. If they didn't, if they had gotten that kill, I, I feel like if. They weren't full flash. They would have been able to take the side a lot faster, but the the rotate team and so quickly. I don't know if it would have made a difference. But yeah, again, uh, Birds Pro knocking on the door of a 14 run half here. Uh, existence uh, do not have that much money at all. Yeah, I mean, this is a really tough spot here that uh, Existence find themselves in. Only one round to speak of uh, in this first half, and you know it's even more dominant uh, from VP than what we saw in the first half of Overpass. So. You know, definitely just a tough time here for Existence as they are trying to storm their way into the a bomb site. But Bialik playing this fence corner with the AK just picks them out as they come out the smoke. Three kills before going down. And, you know, Taz already in position here from the highway to, to collect one as well. And, and Force slipping into yet another clutch round. Yeah, this is level two of the clutch. Um, going from a 1v3 to a, a 1v4. What's no gun? Yeah. No gun, no bomb. Deegan a dream. Yep, it's spotted. Oh, it's up first. <laughs> Take it easy. He gets a gun now. Okay, now he's back to level one. Yeah. But uh, the difference is, is he had to jump on everyone last time around, uh, kind of flanking and, and getting like a free kill on the guy inside the site and getting like an easy one versus two. In this situation... He, he doesn't have enough time to make this play. Not, not versus three players. Yeah, I don't think so either. 
And the, the crazy part is, is Posh is actually fanning Probably, out for yeah. this. Yeah, that's crazy. I would not expect it. Oh my goodness. He can see his gun. He can see his gun through the wall. Oh no. Oh no. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Flip it down to one versus two and 12 HP Wait, cut up the highway. Knife him in the back. And he left clicked him. Oh. <laughs> wow. Oh my goodness. That was great. Maybe he I didn't left click. I can't him. believe Maybe Posh like actually a... expected him to go all the way to B. I think it was like that's the only way that he felt that his team could lose the round is a crazy flank like that. So I, I mean, guess he that just makes sense. That just it's insane. Like he had yeah, forty insane. seconds left and yeah. Yeah, I think I guess that was a left click anyway. Like if it was a right click, Less it would have been, been a yeah. kill. <laughs> that's insane. Nice uh, reaction. Yeah. Flipping man, no giving time. existence as giving existence that small hint of hope. But I mean, at this point, it's uh, I mean, fifteen zero comeback from existence CT side to win the map in regulation. Mm -hmm. I mean, what are the odds of that? Like two percent? Uh, yeah, like one and a half percent. One and a half percent. I'll take those if they, odds. Wait, if they win a pistol. And that increases to like six or seven percent. About three and a half percent. Three and a half percent. I still like those odds. I'll take those. I mean, you could get rich, but you could get real rich, but uh, you could also lose a lot as well. But um, anyway, existence here, trying to put up their last hand on a pistol round to uh, you know disallow VP that opportunity at map point. But well. Uh, B is pretty much already open here, except for Moose and just watching the side cross from heaven. Uh, not going to spot anything here, and then they're just pushing in the CT spawn, getting the kill on the suck it, Ron. Kyrie rotating with the USP, doing nice work, though, getting a couple of headshots with this bomb. Will get planted. It is a three on three post plant situation here. Health pretty equal across the board. Snacks, though, setting up to cut off Mason's rotation through mid, but he's taking some heat, but still Snacks gets the kill, and he'll come through Vince to help out for the rest of this retake as well. As Kyrie, all alone, he's going to have to ace if he wants to win this round and try to prevent the map point, but oh, Snacks with the one tap over the box. That's brutal. And that's now a uh, match point for VP, and they're going to have 14 opportunities to close the game out before an overtime would occur. And yeah. you, you got to like those chances for VP. Yeah, how are you feeling about your odds right now? Um, there's like a... If you could visualize it in like a, a virtual world instead of just numbers, mm -hmm. it would be a very, very microscopic chance. Like a... Like an amoeba amongst the Atlantic Ocean. Right. I can see it that way too. Well, well Snacks gets punished. I mean, two players go down. We saw now there's two amoebas. Almost slow down. There we go. Two amoebas in the Atlantic Ocean swimming together in unison. That's the chances that. Uh, oh, three. The three chance. amoebas. We get, now we now have a multi celled organism here in the ocean. <laughs> Wait, is it amoeba single cell, right? Uh, amoeba is a single cell organism. I'm gonna go with it. All right, cool. Lock it in. Lock it in, baby. I locked here. it in. <laughs> Has existed, so we'll win the round. Actually, so good job there. But uh, still, 13 opportunities for VP to close this thing out before overtime would be a reality. Which we do still do overtime here in the best of two series. Um, it is still MR3 with 10k. So, that is all that exists to hope for at this point. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're going to have the buy here. I think we saw this last time, except uh, Neo, had the, Neo had the scout and they ended up winning. No, actually, yeah, they won that round. That was for the 15th. I'm trying to draw a parallel between caching and uh, overpass. And that fire poured <laughs> over fair. the boost boxes really well. I caught Bialy all the way on the ground or oh. on the other side. That's pretty insane. I need to put some of that uh, lighter fluid in my incendiaries. Molly's. I got you. I don't know what you got me. You, you like to have it. You have that stuff. Have what? You have the right fluid. The right fluid. I'm lighter not. Fluid? I, I mean, yeah, lighter fluid. Yeah. You're, you're gross, man. Wait, what? What? I own it. There, I have lighter fluid in my room. I don't understand what you're asking. Really good lighter fluid. Oh. oh it wasn't a one D. It was a. Nice... I thought it was. It looked like it. It felt like it, but it wasn't. Technical 1D, right? 
Oh, good flash on the highway. And Neo's in such a dangerous spot slipping in the CT spawn like this. He's able to cut off Moose and Bonnie's rotation from B. And I mean, VP are going to be able to do like, kind of a pincher movement here on the A bomb site. And it puts Mason in a really awkward spot. But suck it, Ron, here with the MP9 inside the site. Still able to get the kill there on the Neo. Taz finally does spot Mason out over here at mid, and so it's going to be up to uh, up to the likes of Suck It Ron to try to you know prevent himself from getting pinched, but he will in fact succumb to it, and the bomb will get planted. And now flipping must one v two clutch to keep this game going. He does have the ump. Will the ump call for an out, or will this be a safe? For VP so far, it looks like the ump wants to scream that this is uh, an out. As Slippin is running his way into the site here up against Bialy, who does have this MP9 back up and tucked in the quad box area. Flippin does have the health advantage, pulls out the CZ, and gets the kill that way, and he will get the defuse. And we have now 15 to three here as uh, existence as chances has been upgraded to uh, maybe like a small perch or something like that in the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. They've, uh, they're working on an island, but Flippin almost has all the efficacy in this game, I feel like. Uh, two clutches to his name so far, out of the three rounds they've won. Yeah, I mean, uh, he, he's been absolutely big for them uh, throughout this game, which I know it's hard to say because they've still only won three rounds, but literally those rounds have been kind of on the back of, of some good clutch plays out of Flippin. Mm -hmm. Especially that one he had on T side, that was pretty clutch. That clutch was very right clutch. There. Yeah, that clutch was very clutch. Mm -hmm. I just realized how redundant that was as soon as I said it. It's one of those things where you can't like you can't like reach out for the words you just said and bring them back into your <laughs> you're just kinda screwed at that point. That's pretty much what happened. But uh we do see VP trying to oh, work the bomb is going. Site. Yeah, they got planted inside of a smoke and I don't think existence really picked up on on the guy that slipped in there to plant like that. And it's planted towards mid, which is really dangerous because there's two players mid, but uh, they are going to get cut off here by once again flipping with the M4, preventing them from being able to, to kill the diffuser there up the highway. And that is kind of a very dangerous plant. It's one of those plant spots that have so many options to hold from. You can still hold from uh, A main, you can hold from forklift, you can push in the CT spawn, hold from there, and of course, highway. Yeah, if Yali wasn't aim punched, he probably could have gotten the planter there. I mean, actually, Taz missed too, but. That was a, yeah, it was very dangerous. Open highway plant. Two players late mid. No one there at mid to actually stop it. I mean, I thought the bomb was just going to get defused and they were just completely out of position to defend it, but they were actually in a pretty good position. It's just that there were four players up for existence who are trying to make the most of their half right now. Yeah, that was just kind of a neat strat there by VP to kind of use the wall of smokes to get to the other side of the red box and plant for highway and just kind of follow their players off A main and shuffle back through mid garage. Uh, just kind of a, another way to hit the A bomb site. Um, as VP showed us a little flair there, showed us a little bit of, a little bit of strategy, a little bit of tactics that they uh, have in their, their their playbook, as they are now trying to storm their way into that B bomb site. Pasha's fire will actually catch slip into the clutch player for existence. The series is down, and the Neo by himself just pretty much shutting the door on this game. It's Here's your tryout. On this is your tryout. Yeah, clutch right your cut, right? Clutch your cut. Clutch cut. Yep. And uh, the scissors are going to be out, apparently. But uh, it is 16 to 16-4 in favor of VP here on a cash after a 16-6 to 6 victory on overpass. And there's really not much to break down. It was pretty much just VP being dominant across both maps, especially in the first halves. You know, from T side and overpass, they put up 11. From CT side, cash, they put up 14. So it was just always them getting a really dominant first half, no matter the side choice. Um, on two maps that are, you know, since some of the other maps that are in the pool, and uh, they just they just dominated, you know, existence just you know the underdog, and they just uh, they couldn't get it done. And I, I think it was just kind of a a tough selection of maps too. Um, mm. You know, it's kind of hard to battle VP on cash, which is I guess your more comfortable map when it's VP's best map, and they're probably one of the best teams in the world in the map period. Um, yeah. So, so tough stuff there, but I think we are going to take a break for a little bit, but we are about to have Virtus Pro taking on Gamers 2. I'm not sure if they can't just start, like, right now, or I think the official schedule time was 4, 4 30 minutes from now. Yeah. So, so we'll I don't know if they'll right start there. early or if they'll just start in 30 minutes. I'm not really sure. We'll just have to kind of sit back and see. Yeah. But uh, we will take a break for now. 
At the very most, it'll be 30 minutes before we start the next series, but maybe there's a chance it starts a little bit earlier if Gamers 2 is not busy or something, but probably going to be a 30-minute break. But uh, we appreciate all of you for tuning in. If you enjoyed yourself, please do follow up. We do bring you the Pro League coverage here from Sevo and MLG every day, Sunday through Thursday. Usually we start around you know 2 p.m. Eastern time, and we pretty much run up until like midnight Eastern time or something like that. We you know cover you're up first with a couple of best of twos during the day and the afternoon for us in the states and in Canada and such, and uh, then at the nighttime hours uh, for us over here in NA, we, we do the NA games. So that happens every day, Sunday through Thursday. So you usually can catch at least, you know, four best of twos, two from each region every single day. Uh, so definitely just go ahead and follow up and catch all that. You also follow me and Launders over on Twitter. You know, we, we do some of our own individual content as well that you can check out, as well as just casting here. So be sure to, to check us out if, if you don't mind. And uh, without further ado, we'll just uh, then cut to a break here, Launders. See you in a bit.